Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we have Leo Lamprecht from Zeit. Uh, Leo, thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, for those of us who aren't familiar with your work, do you want to give us kind of a, a little bit of a history of how you got to how you got to now? Yeah, so basically, um, I started at working outside a couple of years ago. Now I'm the head of product, which means I'm responsible for what's going on on the front end, basically. And yeah, today I'd like to give you a demo of how easy it is to just deploy Gatsby without any additional configuration, without acquiring any additional knowledge, actually. Um, and yeah. Awesome. So, um, for those, oh, I should have been showing this the whole time. So this is Leo's Twitter account. You should go follow him. Um, and we are going to be working on, uh, using the Zite platform today, right? Yes, exactly. So we're gonna deploy via the command line, a Gatsby site, but also via GitHub import an existing one to really showcase both are easy. Cool. Yeah. So I guess we can, let's maybe start with a, um, a from scratch one. So we'll do, uh, uh, let me create a new project. I'm going to use the Gatsby yes. CLI. Um, and we will call this uh, Zite Gatsby Deploy. Um, and I'm going to use the Hello World starter. Gatsby exactly. Hello I think World. you don't even have to specify it. It just works. Well, the, the, last the, yeah. the last argument um, by default would give us like a uh, kind of a blogs or like a, a demo starter. Um, this hello right. world gives us just like a really, it, there's no extra stuff. So there's nothing to delete or, um, or to rework. Oh, it's, it's just like a react component that says hello world. Um, makes sense. Which makes it a little easier for us not having to figure out like, oh, what was the styling choice they made for this? And, <laughs> um, yeah, makes so sense. So then I can open this up. Let me resize this because it's way too big. Um, and boy, what did I do? I must have hit some buttons last time I did this because that text is huge. Uh, wow, what, what's going on? Calm down, computer. <laughs> At least it's great to see it's very big. <laughs> you can read it easily. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so there's that. Let me make this a little bit smaller. And we are, oh, this is the wrong thing. So I want to be in that um, that directory that I just created. So we're going to use that one instead, if I can type. There we go. Um, so awesome. this is much better. It's just a, a basic hello world. Um, and so this time we will say hello site. And now we have a site that we can deploy. It's not going to look That's like great. much, but we can definitely do it. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah, so basically, if you're um, basically, we're going to show the flow via GitHub, or if you already have a Git repository later, uh -huh. what we're going to do now is simply show how easy it is to deploy from the command line since we created a project in the command line. Yeah. So what you want to do first is um, install now, which is npm install dash G now. Okay, so I'm going to use the, the global ver or the yarn version. So yarn global. Yeah, add that's fine. Now. Exactly. Exactly. So this will install our command line, basically, which is called now CLI named after the platform, which is called now. And yeah, this will allow us to just with a single command deploy that Gatsby project after yeah. we logged in. <laughs> okay. And I think. I can't remember if I have a Zite account, so we, we may have to create a Zite account as well. Yeah, that's fine. Why, thank you, Spaz Freak. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, that's true indeed. That's true. Very okay. Good. Uh, good morning, Brian. All right, so we have... Um, uh, it's the now CLI is installed. So correct. So now, now what the only thing we want to do is run now login. And this will tell you to once you run it exactly enter your email. And that will allow us to create an account. Yeah, so now you get an email that you need to confirm. Oh, cool. Okay. Account. So let me get over into that. And I will come back into my browser here and just paste that. Great. 
Okay, so great. That's so now your email is confirmed. Exactly. I am now logged so, in. Yes, exactly. Awesome. So now literally the only remaining thing for us to do in order to get our freshly created Gatsby project, which we just created a minute ago to deploy is we move inside the directory. Okay. I'm here. I'm here. Perfect. And then we literally just run now those three letters. Exactly. Oh, this is this is going to be a short stream, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the idea behind the product, to not waste any time um, getting your stuff deployed because you've already spent so much time configuring your local development workflow, configuring the project itself. Yeah. So you don't want to spend time configuring uh, the the production deployment as well so and that so can be you really easy. can you talk a little bit about what's happening under the hood so is it is it like doing something special because it's gatsby or is it just reading the package yeah, JSON so or the way it works is if you click the link um that is shown here this exactly. one yes um you will have to log in again with your email oh with email GitHub. oh yeah exactly so in this case you already signed up so Exactly. Okay. So after you confirm the email, what we'll see now is um, basically a page that indicates the progress of the deployment, including the logs, everything that's going on in the build, which we'll see now. If you click the link again. If I, yes, click demo. this link. Yes. Well, <laughs> now um, oh, we were, we're already slow. We're deployed. It's already done. Yeah. Exactly. So what you can do, however, now is enter in the address bar slash underscore after we replied. <laughs> exactly. So slash exactly slash underscore S if you R click on overview. If I click on, sorry, I think we, we might've had a, uh, a hiccup with the stream. Okay, oh. so I think we're back. So um, just to, to recap what we just did, we clicked the link that came out of, of now, and yes. then we went to slash underscore SRC. Exactly. And I am... It, yeah, so this is an incognito window, so... Oh, wait, okay, so this is not where I want to be, actually. I want to uh, I want to open exactly. it. Exactly. I want to open it here. So let's... Um, I'm just going to copy-paste this. Yes. Put it up here and then i'm going to go to underscore src exactly so and now that we're back i can explain again that this is basically just the source that you just deployed yeah but if you click on overview on the top left you will see all the details about the deployment itself you will yeah. see the domain that were that was assigned to it how long it took to deploy and 95 seconds and then uh, the status and also the fact that it's, you know, um, deployed across our entire CDN, meaning it's served with maximum performance right from the edge. Mm -hmm. So if you scroll down, you will already see the runtime logs. But if you click build, those are uh, the build logs. Exactly. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, so what happened here is we detected that you're deploying a Gatsby application. And we not only, as you can see, ran the Gatsby build command for you, but we also, through detecting that it's Gatsby, we were able to provide you with custom caching headers, for example. Oh, fast. So, exactly. So, all of the pages that you just deployed, they now have. Uh, caching headers, default caching headers out of the box, meaning that on all our CDN edges, your deployment will be served with maximum performance. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, and so the, the question is, how many commands are being run after we type in now? So from, no. from us, we're not running any extras. And under the hood, it's basically just detecting like, oh, this is a Gatsby site, so run the Gatsby build. And, and then the, the rest of it is just kind of platform configuration stuff that we don't need to Correct. think about. That's, I mean, this is really cool. Like this is, uh, this is pretty slick. Um, 
Yes, I think. Yeah. yeah. So I, I want to quickly uh, first off go to site.co slash smart dash CDN. Smart dash CDN. Exactly. So this is this provides a quick overview of um, our network, basically, and all these um, blue icons and black icons that you can see on this world map mm -hmm. are the edges from which your Gatsby deployment that you just created will be served. So that's, that's, even though I, you literally, I, I know yeah. that this is not what we're talking about today, but this is pretty slick. I like the way this is done. Um, yeah, I, I kind of want somebody to come <laughs> teach me how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So even though you just ran three commands to deploy your Gatsby app, right? N O W, you now have it deployed on all these edges and served with maximum yeah. performance. Yeah. You didn't even have to tell us um, the output directory, the build command, things like that. We just inferred those. Yeah. Directory. And so, the, and this is all just kind of set up in a way that, like, you know, if I was, so right now I'm hitting PDX1. Um, yes. But if I was in. That's Australia, I would hit SYD one. That's correct, exactly. That's so very cool. Since um, those edges are closer to, um, basically, you will be routed to the closest edge, yeah. meaning that yeah, you will be served at a much much faster performance than if that request went to went across the world, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. I mean, we are we're limited by the speed of light, right? So. Exactly. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, this is super cool. So this, this is all, and this just happened, right? So the now CLI is kind of like a, an abstraction over a huge amount of DevOps work. Yes, exactly. That's how you can look at it. Yeah. So, um, now what I wanted to show is you told me that you have Gatsby projects on your GitHub account. Yes. Perhaps on your personal account, for example. Yeah, so I have here um, a whole bunch of them. Let's look for one that's not too over the top. Um, so let's do, how about this this demo portfolio? And this one will be interesting too because it's it's got branches. Um, mm -hmm. Let me make sure that we don't need any end variables for this one. Yes. Yeah, we, we don't. So this will be, be fine. Mm -hmm. So I would like to have a quick look at package JSON of that project. Okay. Because what we require to be in package JSON is a build command. So obviously for Gatsby projects out of the box, you need that anyways in order to build your project. Mm -hmm. So we will run this command for you. Okay. So since it's there now, this will work just fine. Basically what we'll do now is just go to site.co. Okay and uh, log in. You can just reload in this case since you're already logged in. Exactly. Okay. Great. So now you can see an overview of what you've deployed in the past. These are the projects that you created in the past. And at the top, we have the site Gatsby deploy project that we just created. Yes. Exactly. So this is just what we saw before. But what we can do now is if you click edit, on uh, the Git integration section, exactly. Okay. You can now connect your GitHub account. If you've got the first button. and you've got GitHub and GitLab. Correct, exactly. Very cool. Both work the same way. Okay, so I'm going to add it for my personal account. Um, I guess I uh, let's I maybe go through yes, this workflow. We'll can... do demo Gatsby portfolio. Exactly. Okay. Then I'm going to install it. Uh-oh, right. um, uh where is it? Here? Here? There it is, probably. Hopefully. Yes. Okay, good. Great. Okay, so it's successfully so now, installed. Exactly. So now you have connected your GitHub account to the platform. And now this is where the fun begins, because now if you um, just want to import your project from GitHub, uh -huh. you can click the arrow right next to new project and it will give you three options. Cool. The first one being creating a completely new one. The second one allows you to 
uh, pick one that you already created on GitHub, for example. And the third one does the same, but for GitLab. Okay. So in this case, we want to do GitHub. Exactly. And we want the demo Gatsby portfolio. So I'll select Correct. that. And then just click import. Oh, okay, cool. Import. Exactly. So now we are deploying um, your project just as easily, I would say, um, as with uh, now CLI. As you can see, we've already started spinning up the necessary um, DevOps part yeah. uh, for your app to be deployed, even without asking you any questions, right? Mm -hmm. As you have noticed, there's nothing you have to configure in order for your project to work. So obviously, in this case, we now have Yarn running, which sometimes takes a while. So and so a question about this one, if I want to change the branch. So for example, this, uh, this portfolio is set up where um, the master branch is kind of a starter. And then I have this combined branch, which is actually kind of like the finished product. So if I wanted to build this combined branch, can I set that up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so unfortunately, right now, we only support master to be gotcha. the source of production deployments. Okay. However, there's something I'm going to show you after this deployed, which is uh, we also deploy pull requests. Oh. So for those, you obviously create new branches. Mm -hmm. um, those will then be deployed, those branches. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. So we're just waiting on this one to finish building. Uh, this one exactly. has a, a handful of packages in it that are pretty big, like uh, like Sharp. So this takes a minute. Yeah. So now, uh, as you can see, Yarn completed uh, installing the dependencies. And now it's just uh, invoking Gatsby itself, the build command, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now Gatsby will run all the things that it usually runs for building. And then once this is finished, as you can see, we'll have our... Um, final site uh, a final site so this is I mean this is pretty slick like it happened fast it um, it did everything we wanted it to do um, exactly even uh, just to mention it again uh, we literally just selected a project that we had on github and we imported it and it got deployed there there's no configuration taking place really this could have been any of your Gatsby projects yeah yeah yeah, very, very cool. Um, well, awesome. So, all right. So then the next thing was we could set up uh, a production domain. We could oh, a production, set up domain. A production domain. Yeah. But let's talk about um, the pull request first since you mentioned branches. Yeah. So if I wanted so to that, create a new pull exactly. request and we'll do this here because I want this combined branch to build. So mm -hmm. let's just create that. Um, exactly. create it all right yes and so then if i'm back here do i need to yes. turn that on no you don't need to do anything so as you can see at the top it says git integration yep below the exactly so this means that your repo is already connected so if you look at the pull request on github and scroll down you can oh. see that now basically already noticed um, that you want to deploy it. And yeah, this is an explanation of what's going to happen now. Yeah. But basically, if you look at the, at the checks at the bottom, if you scroll them. Let's see, these are Netlify ones. I wonder if they're fighting. Are, there, are they scrollable? You can actually, uh, next to the comment, there's also a check one. I mean, mm. on the conversation list. Exactly. There's an indicator right next to the comet, an orange one. Here. Exactly, exactly. Huh. So here, so now... I, I, I'm wondering if this is because I already had uh, Netlify plugged in and it's, it's like arguing with you because this is all Netlify chat. Yes. It, it might be interfering. Uh, however, if we reload, perhaps the check will show up. Let's see. 
okay, no, then it's definitely interfering. Yeah. Okay. So let me do something else then. Um, we have, this one is not uh, set up at all. And so mm -hmm. I will do get create. I have got some, some shortcuts here that'll make this fast. So we've now created a repo. Um, and then I will get uh, add all, get commit. Uh, and then we can push that. And so that then will give me another repo here. Um, Great. I can go back here. Let's add a new project from GitHub. Yes. And I just want to mention uh, earlier in the settings, uh -huh. uh, you told GitHub to not give us access to any other repos. So it won't ask so, when I... Yeah, this won't work because the gotcha. permissions are now limited. Okay, let's fix that. In this case, in, we need to go to GitHub or there exactly. And just at the bottom of this page, adjust the settings to give us access to your repo. Exactly. Got it. So um, just to be clear, you, by default, the all repositories checkbox mm -hmm. is checked. So usually you don't need to do any of this. Right. right? So th this is me being uh, being very deliberate about permissions. If you are going to use exactly. Zipe for everything, then you would just check this box. Exactly. Excellent. Okay. So now Great. I have that. So I can go here. We're going to go to a new project. I'm going to yes. grab this one and go. What? Uh, oh, all right. A project with that name already exists. Can I rename we... it? You can just connect it, actually. If you click on it, oh. you can click add. Oh. Exactly. And connect it. Well, that's handy. Yeah. So if you already deployed something with CLI and want to connect it, you can just do that. Okay. So and then. Now, if you create a pull request, yeah, you will so see let's. It. Uh... Whatever. Um, okay, so then we can get uh, commit, and then I can push. No, I'm gonna check out a branch, um, and then we will uh, get push, and then I can do get pull request, and these are the the hub. GitHub tools that I'm using that make this so much faster than having to go to the. Yeah, those are amazing. They save me so much time. Yeah. Okay. So now we have a pull request. Yes, finally. And what should happen? There's our Is check. That... Exactly. Cool. Now, now that only now is on the pull request, it can um, grab the source again and deploy it. So if you click on details. Details. details and that takes us you to our teams. deployment yes and here's the the stuff exactly so now it's building again first off it's of course installing the yarn dependencies and then we will see that the pull request gets updated with the url once this build is completed mm -hmm. yes and um we're actually going to take this one step further after this build is completed and also showcase how easy it is to get a preview actually okay. of the pages that changed on your pull request. Where was my pull yeah. request? Not that one. We're going to get out. We can get out of that. Get out of that. And then my pull request was back here, I think. Yeah. Yes. So I'm going to refresh that because I think I just hit the back button. There we go. So that's all changed and we can see yes. now exactly. we've got our pull request. That's slick. So exactly. So the beautiful thing about this URL is that it's locked to your branch. Mm. So if you were to push more commits to that um, branch or pull request, it would be reflected under this URL. Right. Okay. So that, yeah, that's really cool because then theoretically, like I, you know, I'm sure this probably isn't what you want done, but 
um, I could just use this URL as the one that I mask with my production domain. Yeah, so currently that's not yet possible. However, oh, gotcha. you could change you could change this URL um, in such a way that it's simpler and then use it as a production deployment. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, but uh, something that uh, we've noticed uh, with these URLs is that if you're developing uh, something that requires login, like a dashboard, mm -hmm. then that login will persist since the domain for the cookie continues to stay the same. Mm -hmm. So you will just be logged in all the time and you can keep pushing changes and just try them out as you, as you go. Nice. Without logging in again. That's really yeah. handy. Exactly. Well, cool. So, so then if I, if I merge this, yes, then we'll see the, um, it should kick off here, right? So this yes. is this one. This is the uh, one we did uh, 20 minutes ago, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's the original build. Exactly. And then if you click on the project name at the top, then it will take you back to the project. Exactly. Okay. And so it looks like it didn't pull the. It did. So um, if you look at your repository again, Oh, 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 I see what's happening. So it's like here, right? Yes. So if you look at your repository again, you will notice that the check uh, appeared on master. The check appeared on master. If you um, click on comments, on, yeah, or there. Exactly. Now there's the check. God. And this check uh, indicates that oh. it's been successfully deployed. Uh, to production. Okay. And so then if I go through here, we can see that on our main URL, this is, this is now set. Um, exactly. So let's try extending this with a cover. So. <laughs> All right. I, I don't know what's going on with the, the stream today, but I'm having having weird issues with it where it's uh it like it just drops off to basically no bandwidth um and oh, if wow. i yeah so it's it's a little bit it's it's been a little frustrating because it's happened to me the last couple of days so i'm i'm not sure if this is on my end um mm -hmm. but i can't i have no idea so anyways um so now we've we've so we've successfully at this point um we're let's see 30 minutes into the stream and let's let's just recount all the things that we've done. We created a completely from scratch site. We yes. set up a Zite account. We deployed yes. this site. We mm -hmm. created a Git repo for it. Um, we hooked up Zite to monitor that Git repo and automatically yes. deploy pull requests and automatically deploy any changes to master. Exactly. Um, I, for, for anyone who's watching, so like I remember working in the in the time of like FTP and of using you know you'd, you'd upload through FTP and then if you were really clever you had like a varnish cache set up and you'd have to figure out how to invalidate your varnish cache um it was in the yeah. 90s ours a fran um but <laughs> uh yeah and so you know to knowing how long it would take me to get a site set up for deployment and get everything sent across and all that stuff. Like that amount of work was huge. It was extremely okay. challenging and, and extremely uh, time consuming. So the fact that we were able to just do all of this in 30 minutes is, I mean, if, you, if you're just coming into the game and you're looking at this like, oh, that doesn't seem like that cool. Like it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. So I just want to... Um, to showcase uh, how easy it is to go to production, meaning that um, to go from zero to something that has a production domain. Yeah, let's do it. I want to do um, a new project. Okay. A completely fresh one, actually, to okay. showcase how easy the, how short the entire workflow is. Okay. Should so I... let's just go to the command line. Command line. All right. So I'll go to... Um, should I just create an empty folder? 
I would say let's run um, Gatsby new and then just something to use the template that has the base styling. Yeah. The base. So you want like kind of the default site. Yeah, this right. one, exactly this one, for example. Let's do it. Because this one has uh, the the beautiful quote unquote default styles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's got that, that cool astronaut that uh, Florian Kissling exactly. did. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So what I want to showcase is that after you brought in a Gatsby project from the outside or created a new project um, using the Gatsby CLI, uh -huh. it literally just takes like three minutes uh, to get to a production domain from that. Okay, so we have we've got our site. This is a uh, a fresh install. It's in a, a folder without a Git repo. Um, yes. It's just, it's just chilling for us. What, uh, what should I do next? Now we're going to run now again, those okay. three letters. Exactly. So now it's deploying to site now and we'll again, see this URL that we saw before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll run now, now exactly. <laughs> yeah. Great. Come. Um, so. After this is done building, we can actually trace the progress on the URL again. After this is done building, we'll be able to assign a production uh, URL without um, any uh, difficult configuration. We'll just have to enter it and hit enter. Yeah. Okay, cool. And this um, works with you know external domains, also domains that you bought with site, uh, it works with all of them. Yeah. For this one, we'll use a production domain that lives under site, uh, sorry, under now.sh. Okay. Ch just to, um, in order for us not to have to purchase a domain for this. Um, yeah. Can, exactly. and now we can purchase domains through Zite, right? Yes, correct. So while this is building, we can actually go to site.co slash domains. And now you can just, Whoa. yeah, that's another um, great feature. You can buy them through the CLI if you want. Hold on. So, okay. I wasn't planning on buying a domain today, but now I kind of want to buy a domain today. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we can do that. We can do that. Yeah, let's do it. Um, Th that'll be that'll be fun. Can I and I can like search through here. Like if I try one that's not that's taken, will it let me? On the web, it will. Yes, it will uh, show you. I would actually suggest we just enter something in the input right now. Okay, let's do. Um... Exactly, and as you can as you can see, it's auto completing. Um... Totally available. Cool. So to, let's uh, let's do it to, to all the different extensions. Just scroll down for a moment. Um, you'll see that there Whoa. are all the extensions that exist on Earth. You know, mm -hmm. um, in your case, you already specified .com, so it's only looking for the ones that include .com. But oh, if you so take if that I away, yes. Oh wow. Okay, that's cool. Exactly. So if you scroll down further. You'll see we even render hacks, those you know <laughs> <laughs> cool combinations that people often make up. And then at the bottom you'll just see all the available extensions that exist. Yeah. I'm always blown away by all these new uh, TLDs. Like dot yeah. bargains. I feel like I should just open a bunch of sites with dot bargains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why is why is dot auto so expensive? Site plus Gatsby dot auto costs two thousand and seven hundred. Wow. Who knows? Some of them are are really really ridiculously overpriced. Um, yeah. I, oh yeah, here dot cars. Another one's like a premium domain. Yes. Yeah, those are just by default expensive. That's nothing we're defining. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so let's see. All right, so we've got a site. So I want to put this on site plus Gatsby dot com. So I can just run now what was it now domain by sure you can buy it from the CLI now domain spy domain and then whatever the domain you want yeah 
exactly. It is available, and first. it's available for twelve dollars a year. I am purchasing. <laughs> what is happening? Holy crap! Okay, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah. So now we're um, purchasing the domain for you, but also in the background we are already, um, if you have an active credit card, which you have, okay. um, setting up the necessary configuration for that domain so that it uh, works for you. But as you can see, we're rendering, it might take a few minutes. This is simply because the DNS changes mm -hmm. that were just applied just by default takes some time to propagate across the entire world. Sure. Yeah. But at some point soon, probably well before the end of this stream, we will have a functioning site that we've deployed to a production domain. Um, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So now, <laughs> just uh, just so, recapping again, we've done all the DevOps stuff, and we just bought a domain and set it up to point to our production site, and it, yes. and like within a few minutes here, we'll have a a site. So, yeah. I mean, I'm honestly like. I was joking earlier, this is going to be a short stream. There's no way that you do more than this. What, what else is there? <laughs> yeah, so there are two other things. Mm, the first one being we, every time you create a pull request, uh -huh. there's a feature that you can enable that will render a preview on your pull request, basically a screenshot okay. of the page that you added to. Yeah, all right. And then Let's do Let's that. Let's try that. So I have, um, I'll, get, I'll use the one that's already set up, right? So here's our Zite Gatsby deploy. It's hooked up Let's to- Let's actually, I, I recommend using the one that has a bit more to see, this one. Exactly. That's, okay, that's fair. Sim um, simply okay. because the screenshot will show more interesting things. Gotcha. So let me just uh, do a quick get init. We'll get add all, get commit. Um, production site and then we will get push oops set our upstream to origin origin what did i do oh i didn't create yet get create yes and then we will do git uh, push set upstream to origin master all right and now we have a functioning um, repo. I need to connect Zite to that. So I'm going to edit here, go to my app settings, and then go down to here. I'm going to pull this one in as well. So this one's called Zite Prod. Okay, so let's yes. save that. And then I can go back and let's take this one and I want to connect it to a repo. So I'm going to click this link repo button, select that and save. Yes. Okay. So now it's successfully connected. And exactly. as soon as we make a pull request, something should happen, but I assume we want to set the thing up first. Exactly. So obviously this is now connected. So anything you push, to that repo is deployed automatically, mm -hmm. no matter if it's pushed to master, pushed to a branch, so pull request doesn't matter. So what we want to do next is take a look at our integrations. If you go to site.co slash integrations, you can see um, you basically have a, um, a quick overview of the flexibility that the platform provides in terms of connecting with third, with third party providers. Cool. So you just have, you know, Slack, you even have Lighthouse to give you stats on how your site is doing mm -hmm. in terms of performance, um, all these other amazing things, even databases you can connect easily to your deployments. But for wow. this one, for this, yeah, exactly. There's quite a lot and it's actually very easy to create integrations. Yeah. Yeah. This is really messaging. This is slick. Like this is really slick. Um, okay. Yes. 
So uh, the Slack integration, for example, will notify you on Slack every time there's a change to your um, deployment. Uh -huh. And exactly for this, we'll use the deploy summary integration. Okay, so that's that under already... dev tools, but I'm going to click yes. on deploy summary. Exactly. So now you will already see a quick preview of how it works. You basically push to deploy just like you did earlier. Uh -huh. Then you will see a visual summary on the pull request in uh, the form of screenshots. And then you can even click those to see it in action, to actually cool. test it out. Okay, and do I, all I have to do is add? Yes. So now you, if you scroll down, you can select the account that you want to add it on. Okay. Exactly. So there's one remaining thing to do, which is we need to connect it to GitHub. This has to be done because it's a separate service mm -hmm. that is being connected. Okay. Great. So now we're done. Now we can create a pull request. Okay. So let's, uh, let's do this. I'm going to go in here and just, um, swap out maybe we'll swap out the image or something um yeah for example we can just edit the text uh of the page exactly yeah okay so i'm just changing this out uh we're going to change our heading our heading so let's yes. um get status good okay so i'm going to commit everything and then i'm going to check out a new branch because this is a pr thing um, exactly Okay, so I should have committed on this branch. That's the second time this stream I've done that. So let's do <laughs> um, git push uh, origin feature heading. And then once that's done, we'll go git pull request. And we'll just keep that as is. And I'm going to go visit this PR. And so we can see the, the integration set up. Exactly. The now so, box telling us what's going on. Exactly. So this is now just creating a deployment like we saw before. Yeah. Um, simple as that. And then providing you with a pull request specific URL. Mm -hmm. And once that is completed, which I assume will take 30 more seconds, something like that, we'll um, see a visual preview on the pull request of the content. Yeah. Yeah, so it's about to start the build and then logs will pop up. Okay. Um, I got to say, this is this is pretty impressive stuff. Like it's, um, it's a lot of things that are just a headache when you are a developer. Um, so I know the, like, as I've talked about several times now, the, the DevOps stuff is a huge pain. It takes a ton of time. And so being able to just eliminate that is great. Um, having the ability to buy exactly. a domain name from the command line is dangerous. <laughs> I have a feeling that I am going to spend way too much money on domain names that I find funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, that happens. <laughs> and then just kind of having this dashboard. So, you know, this is, uh, this is pretty, like, this is pretty cool. I really, I'm, I'm pretty into the way that this is all working. I'm really excited to see this, uh, see this happen um yeah if you go back to your pull request back to my pull um, request yeah this one exactly it seems see like this. now it hasn't yet updated this oh okay it's, yeah yarn. it's still working here ah oh, damn it yarn i know that in the our our default starter is pretty uh you know it uses sharp it's got some images there's a, a few like slower processes in here yeah i see yeah, so once those dependencies are installed, the build will begin again. And then we'll, um, you know, simulate a screenshot using a headless browser, actually. Cool. And, and then we'll, do you know how that works under the hood? Like, I'm always curious how people are setting these yes. things up. Yes. So in this case, um, we're literally just accessing the site and 
generating screenshots using Puppeteer. Nice. Which means we tell Puppeteer the URL, then we get a screenshot out of it. And then we post it onto your pull request directly. Mm -hmm. So you can you don't have to go anywhere basically. You're, you can just keep being inside of that GitHub workflow or a GitLab workflow even. Yeah. There was a brief second after I asked you that where you were like, yes. And I was like, he's not going to tell me, is he? He's just going to let me hang in. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a pretty common um, way to accomplish this, this actually. So, yeah. So as you can see, um, we Look now have that. a screenshot. Exactly. <laughs> we changed it to hi, y'all. Yeah. And if I click so it, exactly. I'm looking at it. Damn, that is cool. That is, that's just so handy. Um, being able to to get those visual diffs is really like really helpful. Now, does this have like so if I were to do something where I changed um, let's say the layout component? Um, yes. So this layout component this gets used across like all the pages on the site. So is if I change that layout component, is it going to show me every page on the site in that that PR? Yes. Yes. Okay. So it will show multiple screenshots next to each other. Um, there's not much space on the pull request, so we only fit like four. Um, but yeah, they will be shown next to each other, basically. Cool. Yeah. And then uh, Ben in the comments is asking if there's a way to see a before and after. Um, I assume that's not happening now. Why? Well, I, I know that's, that's not happening now. Exactly. That's not happening at the moment. Um, we do, however, have a vision where we want to so you can even more easily grasp the changes. Okay. Um, so I'm going to ask you to answer that one more time because it looks like we froze. So um, oh. if, if so, the the visual, basically showing the before and after. Um, that's that's not happening now. But you you were saying. Correct. So it doesn't happen at the moment. However, we plan on putting before and after right next to each other very soon, and mm -hmm. then actually not just putting them next to each other, but indicating the pixels that have changed in those screenshots. So I, that's a, really, I was just going to ask about that because I've seen some really cool tools for doing like visual diffing of pages. Exactly. And so you're, exactly. you're just going to integrate that right into the, the service. Exactly. Because cool. um, obviously we, we want to see what specifically changed. You yeah. will, you will know obviously, but you also want to see it mm -hmm. um, marked. Yeah. That makes and, and that's really helpful, too, because one of the things that I've noticed is that I have a tendency as sites get bigger and bigger to not remember like, oh, this footer gets reused in this other template. And so I change the footer and it works great in the, the place where I thought it was being used, but it looks terrible right. on the other place. And so having that show up like here's a screenshot of this thing looking completely janky. Um, yes. helps me go, oh, yeah, I need to fix that before I deploy it and get the, the PR or the issue opened that explains what I did wrong. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Oftentimes, uh, you know, there are even things that you're changing in your site, um, uh -huh. in, in utils, etc., that don't even result in, in visual changes, right? Mm -hmm. So in those cases, you won't see anything. Right. But if you're doing such a change and you then see a screenshot that tells you that something changed, you will know that you have broken something uh, yeah. or that you have changed something um, unintentionally yeah very cool um okay so i think that that is uh that is very slick that that just all worked without having to think about it very hard um yeah so if you take a look at your domain now um it might be connected or depending on yeah perfect so the domain is now connected to site okay which means uh you can hook it up to any project okay and the only thing you have to do in order to apply this domain to your project now is if you go uh, to the dashboard again. Oh, to the dashboard. Yes. And click domains at the top. Exactly. So now you can just enter the domain that you already own in this field, basically. And click add. Okay. And that's it. <laughs> whoa it all happened so yeah. fast <laughs> <laughs> so you you purchased the domain and you enter that in that input and you clicked add 
So, so no, really no DNS records, no. no figuring out the difference between an A record and a C name, no, no figuring out forwarding. And does this work? Like if I, so if I go in here right now, it's at uh, the root. If I do like www, so I would have to set that up. Yeah, but that's actually very easy. Go back. Let's to do the it. Domain step. Where was I? No, no, no. The, yeah, here. Yeah. So just enter www uh, and then the domain and click add. That's amazing. So, yeah, and this works with any subdomain, you know, you could uh -huh. even on other projects start using uh, those subdomains. And now does it does it set like a 301 from one to the other so that we don't get duplicate content? Uh, it doesn't do that yet, unfortunately. Um, that's something we have planned, like a checkbox that lets you forward www. Cool. Um, currently, it only works with any subdomain, but there's no redirection. You gotcha. have to set that up. Yeah. Okay. Um, question in the chat is, what about email? Can I point this domain that I bought through Zite to an email provider? Yes, you can. So this is a feature uh, that we um, think is rather advanced, actually, because okay. it requires editing your DNS records, Okay. Um, your MX records, more specifically. For example, you could then point those to Gmail, G Suite, G Suite, um, whatever you want. Okay. So and this can be done uh, via the CLI then. Yeah. By oh, by the CLI. Yeah. And so how would I? Would it be so, in like now domains? Um, it's not. It's there are actually a couple more commands. If you run now dash h exactly, you will see that if you scroll up. Oh boy, there's, a, exactly. oh, there's so much stuff in here, okay. Yes, so for advanced users that really know what they're doing, those people can then edit DNS through the CLI, edit certificates, those okay. are all advanced features meant to be used for advanced use cases. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a now DNS, we've got the ability to remove a deployment. Um, secrets, oh, this will be the chat's favorite command. They're like, run secrets. <laughs> Not going to do that. Um, the yeah, logs, so teams. Just to, exactly, just to answer the question that happened, um, that occurred on the chat. Basically, you can run now DNS and then um, specify your MX record. Yeah. And that will be it. Yeah. That's, so that's how you, how you do that. Yeah. Very, very cool stuff. Um, and so it looks However, like there's... A whole bunch of a whole bunch of advanced stuff in here that we're not going to get into today, but it's exactly. like there is quite a bit you can do. Exactly. So as we've um, talked about in this call, the CLI is an advanced tool. You don't need it. Mm -hmm. As we as we showed earlier, you can just import your projects from GitHub, and that can be even a large project, even a very complicated Gatsby project. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. You can just import it. So the CLI really is not needed for anything at any time. It's just that if you're used to working in the command line, for example, you can mm -hmm. just run commands there. That's and basically it. Someone just shared, um, Ardev just shared a community integration for the DNS editor. So it looks like there's also a, a thing you can add to, uh, yes. to have like a, a user interface for editing these if you want. Correct. We're actually making this one a core feature nice. so that you can just, you know, click on your domain and set your MX record. Mm -hmm. um, so that will be even easier than it is right now. Yeah. Very cool. Um, awesome. And so I think what the the last thing that we were going to look into was because uh, uh, you, you also do serverless functions, right? Right, exactly. So that's the last thing um, because I don't want to put too much um, there's probably a lot that we have already <laughs> covered. So the last <laughs> thing I want to cover is uh, the serverless functions. Okay. So if you, um, let's say, have a you know form on your Gatsby site, or if you have an API uh, that talks with a database, um, all these things that require um, dyna dynamic code execution mm -hmm. rather than static files, those uh, for those you can use serverless functions so this part is is really great this is my favorite 
almost my favorite part, I would say, about creating projects on site because if you go to the command line or your editor. Okay, I'm in my editor. Actually, great. So. Which one is this? This just, is this is our default. Yeah. Oh, this is the, the Zype prod. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. So just to um, give everyone watching a quick recap, we already deployed this in the past. So uh, this is deploying just fine. Mm -hmm. um, however, it's just a static site. It's just a Gatsby site. Mm -hmm. Now what we want to do is extend it with serverless functions. Usually uh, with most providers, there's um, at least some configuration involved in that. With us, it's uh, as simple as creating a file. <laughs> so okay. what we're going to do now is create a I API directory, just call it API. Okay. Yeah. And create a file inside that is called um, hello.js, for example. Okay. So in here, we can write a serverless function. So we'll, we'll do module.exports. Uh, hold on one second. It looks like we just crashed. Oh, okay. Okay, so I think we're back here. Um, Great. All right, so we have created an API directory, created a file called hello.js, and now yes. we are looking at an empty file. So is, does this follow any kind of spec that we've seen? Uh, yes. Okay. So uh, the constraint here is only that the directory is named API. Okay. Um, inside you can do whatever you want. You can create as many subdirectories as you want. You can even, by the way, uh, change the extension of this file to go, for example, oh. and put a go serverless function inside. Cool. And the same works with Python, for example. However, out of the box, there's no configuration, uh, that you have to apply in order for that to work. You That's just change the file extension. <laughs> That's super cool. Um, yeah. so now we are, so, um, you'll have to remind me cause I don't remember the, the API for a serverless function. So how do we, how do we make this thing? Yeah. Work? So, so now we'll do just module dot exports equals, and then like an arrow function with rec and res as the parameters. Oh yeah. Re like request Re and response. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Got it. Exactly. And then um, we'll just do res.json, for example. And just send and then whatever. like Exactly. Like if you were using express, for example, it's the same syntax. Got it. Okay. And is, is this using um, express under the hood? No, but it's using the same syntax. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Very, very cool. So... Um, there's a, a question from GetProPane. Using serverless functions, what is it running on the back end? And would it be possible to increase the available resources on the function or will it auto scale to an extent? Yeah, so at the moment, all of these functions uh, have three gigabytes of memory uh, out of the box and okay. they can run on the paid plan for uh, five minutes. Okay. And that should already be enough to handle. <laughs> you know, even professional use the, cases. The vast majority of use cases. Correct, correct. Um, and yeah, that that's that's already it. Um, of course, lambdas per se auto scale infinitely. Yeah. So uh, this is very scalable. Cool. Um, so now, uh, this is all we need to do to create. Um, our API. And so can I, so one of the problem, like the challenges with serverless, right, is that you have to do a lot of setup to do local testing um, because yes. it's kind of a pain. So it, do you have a way to make that easier? Yes, we have a command um, that I'm going to show you after this. Okay. But first, let's just run now. Let's just run those three letters again. Yes. Okay. So now we will deploy the Gatsby site again. And we will detect your API and make it work. So once the build is completed, you will be able to go to um, slash API slash hello, and you will see the JSON that you returned from the file. 
wait for real yeah. like that's that's it it's not going to have me enable functions it's not going to have me no <laughs> nice. no that's literally it and it works the same way for um for go for python for several other languages that we support out of the box mm. uh, without again any configuration mm -hmm. yeah. cool very cool so i guess well, let's let, nope not that one let's uh get mm -hmm. over to here and we'll pop this one open. Oh, come on. Um, here. I notice he's calling them free letters. Someone is saying, <laughs> yeah. I just like to do that because it's um, so simple to type, right? You don't, usually developers create aliases for the commands they run to make it easier to type. But with now, you don't even need an alias anymore. You just run, you just add free letters and that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah yeah so n. yeah um, alias n that's that's really the, the ultimate conclusion for all of us is single letter variable names and none of us will ever regret that <laughs> except if you forget what you alias yeah exactly yeah. in I'm, the case of now it, it literally matches the product name so there's nothing you can forget but yeah, yeah. Now I always um I, I see people who have uh like aliases for get commit or you know get status or these things in there it's like gcs or gs and i i literally have no idea how people remember that stuff because i <laughs> like i have to say it in my head and then i just type what i'm saying in my head <laughs> like, yeah i can't i'm not built for for short acronyms okay so yeah. it says we're done and so exactly. if i go back to our site zite plus gatsby.com I should just be I able think to this go is the one, yeah. API hello. If this is the one that we assigned the domain to, then yes. Oh, wait. Yeah, so this is not the one then. It's a different project. Yeah. Wait, did what? I thought we, no, Zite Prod. Overview. Zite Prod. Yeah, that's not the project we deployed to, We, I believe. Didn't, or did we? Didn't we? Oh, no. I think I need to, we need to move it. I did something weird. Because it looks like it's assigned to this thing. Oh, no, no, no. Um, sorry. I forgot something. As uh, everyone on the chat already seems uh, to know, there's this um, you know, magical dash dash prod flag uh, that, uh, that puts you into production. Yeah. Okay. And so if I yeah. do, is it going to trigger a new build for that too? This should actually dedupe um, and just notice that you already deployed what? and make it production. Yeah. Well, yeah, so now like, you can try it. Yeah. If I can spell it. Yeah, that's it. Leo, you're killing me, man. Like, usually we have to debug <laughs> something. Usually there's a challenge. Like, holy crap. <laughs> yeah, Ben, yeah. I don't know what's going on. We haven't seen a Oof, single. Ah, oh, there right. we go. So that's exciting. <laughs> I was just going to say we hadn't seen a single sound effect the whole show. Um, <laughs> uh, that is not an invite to spam sound effects, by the way, chat. Let's, let's, uh, let's keep it professional. Um, okay, so we just... Ah, son of a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so we have now deployed a serverless, uh, a serverless function and yes. put it on, on production. It's under a, a yes. running domain name. It's got all of, like, I'm... I'm kind of I'm kind of blown away it's by this. Infinitely scalable. <laughs> yeah, yes. I mean this is this is really exciting. And and the other thing, so the other question from um, you unticked unticked. I don't know. I'm, I apologize. Usernames are hard. Uh, I heard source code is public when you're on Zeit's free plan. That is yeah. So that is not correct anymore. That used to be true years ago when we launched, actually, I have to apologize for that. We thought it's a great idea, but we mm -hmm. removed that um, very soon after we launched. So now it's not a thing anymore. Your source code is not public. So I can only it. see this if I am logged in. Correct. Exactly. Okay. And so you can test that. Go to zeitplusgatsby.com and try to visit underscore exactly. SRC and gone like it works for yeah. me because i'm logged in but it won't work for you probably yeah exactly <laughs> uh unless yeah. you're logged into my account in which case i'm doing way less way worse at keeping secrets than i thought um yeah exactly so now there's something um i wanted to show you that um uh, i would say is a bit more advanced okay but 
basically I want to showcase how flexible this convention, this API convention is. Okay. Because um, if you create an, I, an API, you don't just want to be, have it be called API slash hello. Instead, it's usually called, um, you know, API something. And then there's often something you pass in the URL. So it might be API slash users slash Leo, right? For example. Like that, like right? That. And we want, exactly. we want to be able to like pull this out as the argument. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So, okay. you know, usually you would have to write uh, a routing tree that then uh, captures this uh, this path segment. Uh -huh. With our API um, convention, however, you can just do that in the file system. So what we'll do now is inside the API directory, create a directory called users, as an example. And then, and then inside that, um, exactly. So what we we'll put is bracket name, bracket close, and then JS. Bra like this kind of bracket? Yes, exactly, exactly. Just JS, that's it, yeah. Does it, wait, is that a valid file name? You're blowing my mind yes. right now. It is, it is. <laughs> and this is... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. We back. Okay, so I just created a, a user's directory, and inside of that, I created a file called square brackets around the word, around name, uh, which I did yes. not realize was a fi a valid file name. Um, but that is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so this, um, just to be really clear, is now the only quote unquote configuration kind of that we did in order to capture uh -huh. uh, the, the um, value after users. Yeah. For example, that the value could be Leo. Um, so now we'll just put a service function inside. And now comes the exciting part. You can do rec.query. Okay, so I'm doing rec.query. Yes, that already works like this. Oh, I don't have to like and target like name or anything? Yeah, in this case, we would just return all the query values. But if you wanted to access the name specifically, you can do rec.query.name. Okay. Yeah, let's, I, I'll just, I'll leave that in and let's see what it looks exactly. like. So I'm going to do, uh, what, now prod? That's just, exactly, yes. Okay. So I just want to quickly uh, mention why there are three domains showing up at the top, not two Um this is because the first one is the one you decided to assign. The second one is the WW, mm -hmm. W one. And the third one is what we call a staging domain. So if you're working in a team, for example, you can share that domain with whoever, and they will be able to follow along with your changes. Because every time you deploy, it updates that URL automatically. Mm -hmm. So this URL is there even if you don't deploy to production, basically. It's okay, so when there. when I run now on the master branch, exactly. it'll build to Zite Prod, but I have to promote Zite Prod to production. Exactly. That, so that's a, that's a poor name for what I'm trying to say right now. But it so this will build every single time we hit now, but yes, these ones right. won't pick up the changes until we run now prod. Correct. Or okay. if you push to the master branch. Well, when we push to the master branch, I understand. Okay, so these will always pick that up. But if I just run now, it'll it'll rebuild this. So I can like yes. I can do a sample. Okay. Yes. So this you can send to uh, people in your team, and it will automatically update every time you work on the project, every time you change the code. Got it. So, yeah. Okay, exactly. so let's so, check our progress here. Oops. Yeah. So this is now deploying uh, automatically two serverless functions that we created. Mm -hmm. First of all, we have the one that's called hello. Uh, and then second, we have the one that's called users slash name. Mm -hmm. 
So again, and we can now see here it's picked story. it up. So this is the the user's directory. Correct. Correct. Okay. So, so this this just means that we also um, are trying to install your dependencies for serverless function. Uh huh. So if you have uh, dependencies for the function, we would install those as well. Of course. Yeah. Got it. Got it. And would those run? So I would just install those in my my root level package JSON, right? Like there's no yes. special config or anything. No. No. Very cool. Okay, so this is the um, deploy name. Let me get to the actual, where is it? So I'm quickly going to answer a few questions. So someone just asked, missed start, is all of, all of this um, side v1 or v2? This is side v2, exactly. And then another question is, how would you add a redirect URL uh, from slash now to the staging URL? Mm -hmm. Basic JS, I guess, correct. <laughs> yeah. So this is already answered themselves. <laughs> this is super cool. So um so what I've done here is I visited zeitplusgatsby.com slash API slash users slash Leo and we hard coded the hello, but then we get back the, the query. So name is Leo, and then if I change this to um Jason, yes. it becomes Jason. So basically we have a lot of power here because, you know, if we were doing like a normal, a normal site, we'd do like one, two, three slash posts or whatever. Yeah. And then this would give us back. Um, how exactly. would I do that if I, if I was doing it with you my just, name? you literally just, uh, use the bracket name for your directory <laughs> instead of for the file. That's it. Okay. So what I, um, so if I want to do, so API slash user slash um, user ID slash like resource, let's say, mm -hmm. um, can I do a two stage, uh, yes. URL like that? And how, how yes. would I do that? So inside the users directory, uh -huh. you need to create, um, a directory that's called actually, let me just think, um, if this is correct because it needs to find the right file to match, but I believe it's correct, yeah. So let's create a directory inside the user's directory. Okay, so I'm gonna create a, okay. And let's call it, you know, ID, uh, I mean bracket ID.js for the user ID. Okay. Uh, sorry, not JS, just to. Right, correct. and then I would just create it, another one called resource? Yes, resource.js. Exactly. Whoa. So now just, uh, I recommend removing the name one. Otherwise we're colliding. Of okay. Course. So I'll get this, get rid of this. And also the hello one. Um, I mean, we can leave hello, right? Cause it's outside. The yeah, directory. we can. Okay. So yeah, let's, let's do that. Um, and then I'm going to run now prod. And what this is going to do once it runs is it'll just log out whatever came in in the query. So what we should see is ID and resource, and we should be able to, to mess with both of those. Um, yes. There's a question about auth. I don't think we've got time to actually tackle that, but I'd love to hear if you have a, is there a recommendation from Zite on how to manage that? Um, there's no recommendation because there are so many um, for the serverless world specifically, but um, you can just plug in anything that you would plug in to your Express app. Um, so we so we could use just, like Auth0, we could use Okta, yeah, we could um, use yeah. whatever we want. Right, exactly. Our, our own custom rolled OAuth2 solution, like all those things would be valid. Correct. Cool. Correct. This, is, this works just like um, any other um, serverless function solution. It's just that it's way simpler. Gotcha. Yeah. But you, you have the same flexibility, basically. Yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, so we're coming into the home stretch here. So if you do have questions for Leo, uh, now's the time. Fire away. Uh, drop them in the chat. Um, also, while we're waiting for this to build, I'll just let everybody know if you are enjoying these. Uh, this month is September. Uh, subscriptions on, t on Twitch help support the creators, and um, they are half price for, for the next 
I think week and a half. So um, if you've been thinking about subscribing, you can subscribe today. It's like 250 for the month. And um, it helps me out, keeps me rolling, uh, and also gets you access to, you know, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, <laughs> what's your what's your workout routine, Leo? <laughs> yeah, great question. I do workout um, three times a week. Uh, yeah, I do weightlifting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much does it cost, bro? So that's another great. Um, wait. question because if you go exactly if you go to no wait how do I go uh, to the homepage <laughs> just go to slash pricing that's even easier you'll go straight to the pricing oh man it is really yeah. trying to help me um, pricing yeah. no 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 you're already there oh I'm here okay great yes so there's a free so plan the free plan costs nothing you can uh, host very professional use cases on the free plan so um, 100 gigabytes of transfer, 5,000 serverless yes. functions or invocations. Uh, exactly. Up to 10 seconds, which like, unless you're doing some pretty heavy processing, 10 seconds is a lot. Yes. Uh, 1,000 logs a day, 100 megabyte maximum file size. Good. Um, yeah. And unlimited team seats, of course. You can team, invite anyone. Wow. You, let, you give team stuff away? Yes. Cool. <coughs> That's that's actually really powerful because usually what I find yes. is like once we oh damn it we froze one um so just uh I guess kind of taking it from the top here we've got the 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 free plan is going to give us like unlimited domains so we can do custom domains yes. unlimited requests uh a quite a pretty healthy amount of transfer hundred gigabytes yeah. Um, 5,000 serverless invocation. So that's like hitting that URL, right? Is like when I, yes. yeah. But only, uh, remember only hitting your serverless function, right? Because hitting your Gatsby site, which is not serverless, it's just static. That's completely free. That's, and that's, that's covered up here with the requests. Exactly. And that's yeah. so, infinite. Exactly. Um, up to 10 seconds of execution time, which is, which is pretty powerful. Um, thousand logs a day and like for logs honestly we probably don't need like unless you're i guess logging is really helpful for historical purposes but like a do, thousand lines a day is a lot yeah <laughs> um and then we can upload up to 100 megabytes of files and the thing that i think is really exciting here is that you get unlimited seats so like if you're using with a team um that's pretty that's pretty slick uh what about databases yeah. So first of all, I want to quickly answer um, the question before that and also the question before that um, with regards to the pricing. If you want uh, to uh, use even more resources, if you want to start paying because you have the need for more resources, then it's actually just 99 uh, cents a month. And then based on your usage we charge you so so no caps every and it's just kind of metered usage correct and as you can see it's very very cheap um, yeah and, the, and this is pretty yeah. comparable to i think everything else on the market right exactly exactly um yeah and it starts out at uh, 99 cents a month that is and then pretty to, cool yes and then to answer uh the other question um are these queries GraphQL? How is it related to Gatsby? No, these queries are not GraphQL. It's just basic JavaScript, uh, Node.js to be more specific. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the same syntax that Express uses, Express uses uh, which I just mentioned because uh, so many people use Express. It's so mm -hmm. widely used. So it's, and so it's great to have to and and to answer from the the Gatsby perspective on this, like the the way that this is really useful is a Gatsby site only runs its queries during build time, and that is what makes it really powerful as a static asset generator because you're not hitting databases every every time somebody goes. Your server can go down, and that's okay because you've already generated the the static assets. But you still need to do things like let people click the like button on a post or submit their email to exactly. a form. And for those sorts of things, you're going to be writing plain React code. Um, so that plain React code needs to be able to submit somewhere. And by writing exactly. these functions, we can just submit our form to, like if I have a form for, uh, for a newsletter, 
I can have a form that's like slash API slash sign up slash email. And the email would be whatever gets submitted in the form. And what we're, what we just did is, uh, I, I pulled this up to check it. Um, one of these, one of these does it. Nope. I'm going to get there. Where will I was literally, here it is. Uh, so, <laughs> so we can go to slash API slash users. And then this is the user ID and this is the resource we want. And so we're able to get in the, the request, the query comes back with the ID of one, two, three, the resource of posts. So I could do something like um, API slash sign up uh, slash Jason at Langstorp.com. And now this isn't going to work, but um, this would give me like, uh, this could be set as the email. So I'd get uh, request.query.email and yes. that would give me the email address, which I could then submit through whatever backend node code that I want to write to ConvertKit or MailChimp or whatever my email exactly. platform is. If you hit enter and uh, on that one, please. That, um, yeah, that's because there's an ad I, sign. Um, I well, I, and I also didn't uh, create a sign up folder. So there's like no, oh, yeah, I there, see. Th this right. is, I, I completely made this up, but, yeah. <laughs> um, but I th actually, yeah, if I, if I did want to do this, I could do, uh, what was it? API slash users. And then this, w this is going to be goofy, but it'll say sign up and then resource. So, it, you know, if yeah. I, if I rewrote this, um, we could do, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. That's how easy it is. And then um, there was also another question about, um, I believe, databases. Yes. For those, um, with regards to those, we recommend, or ch in general, in the service world, um, you should be using a remote database. Those are, in general, the easiest um, to use because you don't have to, um, usually you don't have to configure anything special. They are very plug and play, <laughs> I guess. Um, you just need to import your data and get going. Mm -hmm. So yeah, use a remote database uh, like Fauna DB, uh, for example, and, and you'll be you'll be hooked very soon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I've been talking to the Fauna team. I think they're going to come on and teach us how it works. Uh, I'm working out the details of when, but I'm really excited about this one because this is like serverless databases. Um, another good option is Prisma. I'm talking to the Prisma team about coming on because uh, their oh, Prisma wow. 2 it has a fully serverless support as well. So there's a lot of really interesting uh, interesting companies in this space doing really cool things. Um, let me share the Prisma site as well. Um, yes. So good Prisma idea. 2 is very, very cool. So like if you're looking for a, a database solution and you don't want to deal with a bunch of database admin or, or configuration, this is a really good way to go. And yes. we're we're actually, by the way, um, spending quite amount quite a amount of time uh, working together with Prisma, for example, in direct contact on um, making sure what they do is optimized for running on now. So very cool. Whatever solution you'll be you'll be picking, uh, most likely works out of the box with now. Yeah. Excellent. Um, okay. Well, uh, the, is there a site that shows a hundred things you can do with Zite? Um, I mean, I no, think we just built it, not. <laughs> but, but, but that's a, yeah, we just built it pretty much, <laughs> but that's a, that's a great idea. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. with that being said, we're kind of coming to the end of the time. So, um, Leo, where should people go to find you to find additional resources? Like what are, what should people's takeaways be from here? Yes. So in general, I recommend literally going to site.co, signing up, and then not even installing the CLI like we did because it's not necessary. You can just sign up, import a Git repository, and have it be deployed. And that's it. And from awesome. there, uh, the UI will guide you to learning more. OK. Um, and then to find you, you're on Twitter. Is there Are there other channels that you prefer people to contact you on? No, only Twitter. Twitter is perfect. Yeah. Great. Um, Feel all right. free to ask any questions. Good yeah. deal. So uh, with that, I think we're going to start winding down here. Um, chat, stay tuned if you want to raid. We're going to make that happen. Um, and then keep an eye out. Uh, so the rest of this week, we are streaming every day. We were planning to do a uh, WordPress plus Gatsby with Zach Gordon. Um, let me pull up the schedule here. 
Uh, Zach had to reschedule. So tomorrow I'm going to live stream building a, um, a Gatsby transformer plugin. Um, so definitely go uh, t come back tomorrow. I'm going to do it at, at 9 a.m. So same time. And then we'll reschedule this one. It's going to happen probably in late October. Uh, and then on Friday, I've got Aaron Fox coming on to teach us how to get started with Expo and React Native. Super excited about this. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, what's WordPress? I think you're <laughs> trolling. Um, uh, but we're going to use WordPress as a headless CMS so that you get all the good things of a great content management system um, without the the hassle of having to write the front end in in full PHP. But uh, yeah, definitely go definitely go check out that schedule. Um, sign up, subscribe on Twitch if you want to get access to special emotes and and things like that. And otherwise, we will see y'all next. Leo, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. All right, y'all. We'll catch you next time. Bye.